you ever wanted to tap into the high level players and extract the essential tips and tricks to get better at playing at Civ, well sit back and relax because I take on the challenge to do just that. Welcome to the Masterclass series, let's do this. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another Masterclass and I'm here with Julian, yes, the, uh, the person that came over to the good side of supremacy from Treaty and he's been kind of hitting the ground running over the good sort of four, five, six months now, pretty much making himself on the top 10 page I would say. Now where are you on the leaderboard? right now do you know uh i don't actually know i think i i might have dropped a bit because i'm playing lobby games lately but it should be around there yeah somewhere somewhere in the the 2k region fantastic just just UK. just nonchalant just the 2k region you know you know how it is you, um yeah, so so i'm hoping that you know with your level uh, and your knowledge as well hopefully we'll be able to help a lot of people playing the british um, because that is what this masterclass is about but before we get into that just a quick bit about yourself and how you got into age of empires 3 um, because i'm sure uh, many other people will want to know so the floor is yours yeah so i i think it was at the end of 2015 when i first touched the game uh Originally, my brother was playing it. I just thought I'd give it a try and just kept playing. Um, a lot of treaty back then, a lot of treaty for a lot of time. Uh, most people will know me as the treaty player that uh, I, well, probably yeah. still am today. Yeah. And uh, yeah, started winning my first tournament in like 2019, I think, and went, or I proceeded to win all of the treaty tournaments after, and then kind of had like short little sub switches in between until. It's the end of last year, I think, like September or, mm -hmm. or, or when the first big like supremacy tournament really hit the ground. I was like, let's give it a go. And uh, yeah, like what you said, that's where I kind of stayed, I guess. So so I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are asking the question. I might ask just quickly now, why with why the move to supremacy is just something different? Have you, you know, uh, what's the reasoning behind it? Yeah, so it's actually the need for competition. I'm extremely competitive, and after not really having any competition for three years in Treaty, like I've mm -hmm. never actually dropped a match in tournaments, I figured it's time for it. And uh, in, in the past, I struggled with like motivating myself to play Supremacy, but when money was on the line, I got a good introduction to it, and then yeah. whenever now there's like good players, I can 1v1, like Kaiser, like Ongers, it is it's it's just more fun than it is to bash people in treaty so to say so yeah here i am fantastic um so moving on to the first part then so what kind of tip or overall advice could you give any player so not just for brits for any kind of civilization what could you give to the masses that could help them get that little bit higher on the ladder yeah. So the most important thing that I've said in every bit of coaching I've ever done is to just get used to hotkeys. Like you must use hotkeys if you want to get really good really quickly. Use as many as you can. Find someone's hotkey layout. Just copy it if you want. Use someone like use a top player's hotkey layout. Copy it, and you know it's gonna work, and uh, it's immediately gonna bump you up a lot of rank. Fantastic. Short and sweet. I like it. So um, moving on to then British in particular. So let's start off with the first kind of tip that you could give people to really improve at playing the Brits. Yes. So the first tip I'm going to mention is that knowing that the Brits usually want to have a lot of houses due to the house production giving them villages, uh, my advice is to spread out the houses in like a far circle to abuse their line of sight and not get surprised by raids, which is a likely thing to happen when you play a sieve that tries to get out so many villagers early. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And also, do you do you ever advocate going for more of like a defensive or pretty much always you want to get that map control, you want to get that vision, you want to get those houses out there? Um. So it obviously is kind of matchup dependent how aggressive you go with them yeah. um but british usually is a sieve that ages pretty quickly now a bit slower than they used to after the latest patch but i would always recommend you somehow spread them out i would never go fully in base you can there's some matchups in which you would want to go mid map of course with uh, like a base a proper base and then others you wouldn't but uh, i would always spread out like the houses to like your second or third hut yes fantastic and um the second tip then for people trying to get better at this sieve the second tip for people who want to get better at the Civ is get your H1, H2 transition down very cleanly. 
Like, I see most people who struggle with Brit don't get the first five or six minutes of the game right. Try to closely watch, well, let it be me or someone else who's really good with Brit. Yeah. Play them and watch closely what they do and try to just copy it. Like, sometimes it's overrated to just think through everything. Just copy what someone good does. They're going to do it for a reason. Yeah, I think that's good. I think there's there's sometimes when I kind of look at build orders for something and somebody will say, you need to be raiding at 5 minutes 30 and you play a game and then you come out of it and you're like, I'm pretty sure I did that pretty well. You go back at the replay and you're like 40 seconds behind. And, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, it's just constantly practicing and, and just refining it and getting quicker and quicker so that it's pretty much muscle memory. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so the final tip then for the Brits to really help people get higher up on that ladder. Mm -hmm. Be a longbow abuser. I see a lot Ooh. of people who just, <laughs> who just want to go for those masks really badly all the time, even in mirrors and other matchups. And my tip is just be a longbow abuser. Don't mind to open with five longbow. It works in a lot of matchups to just have that long range unit. You can abuse your house's line of sight that in the first tip I said spread yeah. out. And you're going to just start winning many more games if you just start mixing units and don't just focus on that damn basket. <laughs> yeah, so for people going the longbow, they might they might say, oh, well, um, you know, Cav easily get to it and stuff like that. Is there anything in particular maybe with, with walls or something in a way that you can keep your longbow protected? Is there anything, any kind of advice that you could give to try and keep them alive? Um, yeah, so the walls, I mean, walls technically always work. They work in a lot of occasions. Um, what I typically give as advice is, since you're building so many houses, you have a tower, you have a barracks, try to build a wall out of your barracks, tower, and houses in base already. Like, try to put them so close together, kind of just like an AoE 2, so they build a wall on themselves. Like, yeah. that makes it super hard for enemy cap or anything to really go in, as they're always scared for you to pop something on top of it. Mm -hmm. And the further you move out, the more you can make use of actual walls, of course. Like, try to get, get to choke points, put bows in your trees or something. Like, a tree badge is the worst nightmare of any calf user. And yeah. uh, just, just go from there. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I hope those tips have been helpful for you guys and hopefully you can take them away and uh, improve on the ladder, not only just with the Brits, but with the first sort of overall sort of general tip. Hopefully that can help you a lot as well. But before we say goodbye to Julian, I want to ask him what is his favorite kind of meme -y kind of fun build that he does with the Brits? So I think the most fun thing I've done with Brit before is when I play a certain save like Italy, you know it's currently a thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I actually like to just spam all my houses out with Virginia Company and just start massing a lot of pikes. And when he just thinks he's fine because he sees all the pikes and he's like, that's not going to do much. I have my towers. You just get in that five petard batch and you smash him up with a big right <laughs> click. And yeah, if it works, you're the best player on the planet. And if not, you can always say I trolled, so it's a win-win. That's it. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing lost because you're not doing a meta build. You're just trying something out. You're messing around. And if you do get the win, then it's fantastic. So um, Exactly. That's awesome. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Julian, thanks very much for spending some time with me because, you know, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people know you and, and, and how you play the game on Twitch as well and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that some people will take some of those advice on board. And uh, of course, let me know down in the comments below, guys, what you think about this. If there's anything you think Julian has missed, I'm sure there's going to be people out there who's going to say there's certain things that he should have said. But I think we've covered some of the best bits. So thanks, Julian. I appreciate it, mate. Thank you for having me. No problem. Take care, guys. Cheers.